Is welcome to game two between Whip and Striker. Whip starting up right in corner as the teal Terran bottom right in corner. We have Striker as the blue Zerg. Same colors again, and just making sure it's not the exact same replay. This is on Polypoid this time. It was a fun one. My face is red at the end. Should have relied on Striker to have that queen turnaround. Whew. But yeah, an exciting one. And that that was the level of game I was expecting out of this. Whip on the back foot for a lot of that match, trying to shift it back around. For a second there, I was like, oh, did he do it? Nope. Queen's out of nowhere. Striker. And that's what... Uh, I feel like that all of that sort of encapsulated a lot of both their style of play, to be honest. Anyway, Overlord going to get first scout on Whip as it's making its way to the top right in the corner. We'll see what Whip has cooked up this time. I assume he's not going to go for the proxy factory play once again. Although I do feel like going for that proxy factory play is a bit of an indicator that he feels like Striker's a little bit higher in the MR, MMR range and therefore a more formidable player. Always feel, I, you know, it's kind of odd. I feel like on the Korean side of things, when they're playing someone I think they think they're better than, they will cheese them. I don't know why that is, unless it's like tournament situation, things like that. Whereas it feels like amongst American players, they will cheese if they feel like they're not as good as they're... It's like inverted somehow. Uh, in general play. I don't know why that that's the case. Anyway, 12th hatch for striker. That's just kind of something I've noticed. And it could just be a ladder thing. I don't know. There's a lot of cheese that happens on the ladder, obviously, regardless. <clears throat> But even in tournament play, I mean, I remember seeing uh, Rhett go up against Savior, and Savior... Was it Savior? Yeah, and Savior... It was on, like, a Medusa, and Savior went for this backdoor bust. I did not know that he was a filthy uh, match trigger back then. Otherwise, I might have paid him to lose to Rhett, because that would have been a big boost of confidence for him. Anyway, 204 Extractor. So it looks like we are going to see two Hatch Mutalists to start. Minerals have already been stolen for Whip. Whip going to go ahead and go for one Rax into Expansion Striker. is going to spot it with the Overlord hanging out overhead. <clears throat> I think that'll be... It should be the last time I ever mentioned Savior on stream. But yeah, it was really... Anyway, it was fun to watch. But now, like, looking back, wow, that's a little bit of a spoiled memory, isn't it? Sad. Oh, well. Anyway, that was at uh, a BlizzCon a long time ago. Anyway, second half, you're going to come online. Drone's done some damage. Man, I'm a little bit sad now. i got to hype myself back up. Lair behind all of this. Refiner being grabbed. It's a fun, that was a fun uh, fun time, though, overall. Really cool, guys. Drone kill for whip. That hurts early, too, because you don't have a lot of drones to work with, and that can actually be a sizable chunk of your economy, because Dr Zerg has to play fewer drones. So nice micro there from Whip, getting the kill. Is he gonna get... So sending another SCV out to Marines in the meantime, holding the ramp. Layer about halfway finished. And Whip looks like he's gonna go for that Engineering Bay first. So eBay plus one weapons. I like this, particularly to engage against two Hatch Mutalisk. Need every advantage you can get. Zergling speed being upgraded for Striker. <clears throat> drone holding the ramp. But it looks like that SCV is going to be able to go ahead and wander in. And should be able to confirm everything here. So first of all, yeah, absolutely confirming Spire timing. The one thing that the one racks plus one weapons play is a little bit weak against is Zergling Floods. But I don't see a lot of Zerglings being fielded as of yet. And it looks like I think that SCV from Whip was able to confirm. And if it wasn't, then is going to confirm that second gas now. So confirming that it is going to be a lot of Mutalisks very, very rapidly. <clears throat> Marines moving out just to make sure that there weren't a pile of Zerglings out on the front. But yeah, one downside to this build is, is it takes a while to get... There's kind of a window where, yeah, you get plus one weapons earlier. But, uh kind of a thin margin and and again yeah zergling attacks on the front can be hard to fend off with the fewer marine numbers but it doesn't look like striker is capitalizing on that that spire 
going to be finished in not too long. Whip tacking on the three additional barracks behind this and stim pack. And so it'll be a small window for Striker here. We'll have Mulus up in the air before plus one weapons kicks in. But in that small window, Striker could absolutely wreck Whip's day here. Looks like he's going to go ahead and grab a third base in the bottom left hand corner. What's up to Froden out there, by the way? Blast from the past. Actually, need to ask that guy. So this is a, this is going to be an interruption in the commentary, but hopefully he's coming to TwitchCon this weekend because if he is, I want to grab lunch with him. I'm trying to arrange something with him and Mr. Bitter and go have lunch and relive the glory days. Uh, range being upgraded. Mutalists now in flight. <clears throat> Six mute in the air, and so this is going to re really be the critical moment here. We got three turrets out at the low edge. You can see that bunker only has a single marine in it, but this is not a lot of marines to deal with this mutalist threat. And once these six mutalists are here, it's basically going to be a mutalist to the marine. And so there's a very small window where a striker can just pummel the marine force while it's small. Maybe you can get something accomplished. But that gap closes really, really rapidly because you can see there's plus one weapons. I'm just going to leave it in the background. <clears throat> In the meantime, we do have the Hydral Sten behind this, and it looks like, yeah, I think Striker realizing that he's not going to hit that window isn't going to be able to get the damage he was looking for. And now, maybe overextending, loses a Mutalist, able to pick off an SCD building the factory briefly, is in the back lines, but going to eat, take two Mutalists, three Mutalists, taking a lot of damage. He's going to sneak in that upper right-hand corner, and that is going to help him with that Sim City in the way. But that is a lot of damage that those Mutalists have taken. Fortunately for him, it doesn't look like he is dedicating full Mutalist play. It has switched more towards the Hydralisk. No plus one weapons, plus one armor as well. But now Whip, with plus one weapons, range finished, Stim Pack starting to move out on the map. And this is before Striker has Lurker Tech quite finished. Queen's Nest dropping on the front, so it's going to be a close rush between this, where the Mulas are just not there and really cannot stop this Medic Marine Force from piling forward. The, lurker, the Lurkers are morphing on the front. That's four of them currently. Are they going to be in time? Medic Marines continuing to march the Mutalists flagging alongside looking for something to pick off. Nothing there. Comps adding the Lurkers are going to be there and burrow. And Medic Marines dying on the front just a half second too late. With regrouping backing off this bottom left hand base, though still very exposed. The Mutalist is going to draw back, see if they can pick up some stragglers or find some infrastructure that is exposed. With that threat taken care of, looks like they are going to be able to pick up those two FTV and slow those starports down. Might even be able to pick a starport off. And Whip actually evacuating the main. We're mismanaging the SCV, so they all went to gas. Mule's going to be able to get a supply depot behind this. So Whip not only missing the window with those lurkers on the front, but going to suffer some damage now. And it's taking a lot of time. Really, Striker just abusing this annoying point. You can see all the Sim City in the way. So getting good value out of the Mutalists. And he can just expend them at this stage because they're just there. Yeah. So loses them, but got really good value out of them with all the destruction. So by Needles, but did a great job. Great job. Bottom left-hand corner still exposed. No lurkers there as of yet. However, Hive Tech on the way. Double Evolution Chamber. And a additional macro hatch for Striker. Striker in a really good position now. Initial Scourge being built. Lurkers actually taking up a forward position to maybe do a hold position attack. Let's see if Whip is able to get on the map and make something happen. Now dropping the double starboard. Yeah, Marines just donating their lives across that inside six. Second, we want to call that inside four. Double evolution chamber, actually triple evolution chamber behind this now for Striker. <clears throat> so maybe he wants to get it done with just ground forces. Pile of Marines making their way to the bottom left. But it is so hard to breach. Three lurkers 
holding that high ground and not a lot of science vessels in the air yet because of all of that delay previously. So let's see if Whip just moves out and goes ahead and grabs an expansion. It looks like that is his move. Can't really threaten bottom left. Now those lurkers are, are stacked, so it's going to make it harder to get the irradiates. Initial science vessels being produced. Some zerglings steamrolling through. I think they're just trying to find that medic marine force. Yeah, they're going to pile in bottom left with no dropship support, though. This is, at best, a contained situation. And maybe deny that natural for a period of time. But three gas up and running. Defiler mounds there. Consume being researched. There's a lurker in the background just in case there's a drop of the main. And what was that? A bit of a bug there. The Marines accelerating. They're going to go for it. Running through the ramp. One lurker down. Two lurker down. And Whip actually managing to get it done. However, Nidus Canal's there. Zergling's pressing up. More reinforcements. This is before Consume's finished. And are there enough Marines? No, and they're not able to stop the gas. Consume is now finished. So Whip able to breach bottom left, which, wow, I have to say, is going to be able to take that gas out. That will be a big win. Third base also up and running for him. Plague actually being upgraded, so I actually misread the upgrade. That's going to allow these lurkers and zerglings to just sneeze on these marines and kill them. Looks like, okay, so he does have both, yeah. That also drains a lot of medic energy. Zerglings camping out at the additional bases to make sure that Whip hasn't snuck anything. Another grouping of medic marines at 3 o'clock. Does have a 30 supply lead, but Striker in a really solid position here, particularly as these upgrades start to climb. Plus one carapace currently versus plus one weapons, plus one armor. And that plus plague, it looks like I think he's going to transition to the hydralisk. The plague hydralisk style of play in the mid game with some zergling support. Never mind, Ultra's Cavern's already there. He, had, he honestly can just do whatever he wants at this stage with that three gas. He needs to get that third gas reestablished. He is starting to take the low ground right there. Science vessels moving out, getting some defiler radiates but it doesn't feel like they're in sizable enough numbers to really make something happen. Some medic marines checking out that 12 o'clock. I think the zerglings, I'm not sure if they exited or were killed. Let me see if I get some kill counts. It looked like one of them was killed. But Whip, yeah, needs to shell up, get some more troops out, get that science vessel count out, and just start irradiating whatever he can, particularly keep that defiler count low. Additional carapace upgrade just about finished. Burrow also just about upgraded the striker. Lots of people upgrading Bro today. These science vessels, fortunately spread so only two of them get plagued. They are going to get a defila behind this, but the final one actually looks like it had taken a lot of damage. Not sure how, but maybe an earlier plague that I missed, but that is going to leave them very, very weak. Firebat making to the bottom left-hand corner of defiler. A lot else to go ahead and defend. Six o'clock base being grabbed for Striker as well. And this is also a ramp base, so it's, again, difficult in the mid game. But Whip, with a big supply lead, maybe can make it happen. Science Vessel's diving in. At this stage, if a Scourge, Mutalisk, anything pops up, though, can wipe them out. Going to take out some Lurkers, maybe opening something up here. Scourge being drawn out and killed. Things resetting a bit. Striker in more of a defensive shell. Okay, now getting Ultra speed up in line. Just kind of biding time. Some Zerglings going to stream in, find Medic Marines defending that 12 o'clock, which is going to come online. And a sizable science vessel count is now being fielded. However, it is plagued almost entirely. So Whip's going to have to be very careful with that Spore Colony nearby. But if he can keep dropping those Irradiates, Maybe he can get enough of Medic Green Ball, get that plus three weapons, keep pushing the upgrades, and roll from there. Plus two weapons, plus one armor currently. However, that's plus one weapons, plus one otherwise, and plus two's on the way, and these Ultralists are starting to take the field. Not a lot of defense here, bottom left-hand corner, though. 
So Striker might have to expand those ultras to defend at this location. Marines pushing up. You have the fear out the Zerglings along that southern edge of the swarm. Now Ultralis joining, getting irradiated as they're spawning. Just gonna sit under the cloud for the moment. Kill what they can on the edge. A little bit of a detente here as Ultralis grouping up. More swarm drop. You have to try to preserve some health. Striker very calmly dealing with this. Whip looking for a counterattack here at the natural expansion, saying, okay, if all of your ultras are dedicated there, maybe I can get something done at the natural. Pressing in, getting some Zergen kills, a defiler kill, some drone kills, might be able to get some overlords as well. More reinforcements making their way bottom left to occupy these ultra lists. And Striker in the red. So Whip, if he gets a move on, maybe might be able to dive down there. More ultra lists are trying to make their way from the bottom left. Cut off reinforcements. But there's an attack force, yeah, now able to just stim their single ultras to try to deal with it. Zerglings attacking from the rear, meaning a fire back, quickly wiping them out. This is where those upgrades are really kicking in for Striker, though. That plus Plague, the Zerglings just absolutely obliterating those lines. Plus two. Claw attack. What do I want to call that? Blades is not right. Claws? Yeah, claw attack. So Striker holding... He's got all sorts of gas to work with. Science Tussle's moving forward. Whip needs to just start irradiating everything as rapidly as possible. That is leaving some of these ultras thin at the very least. More Medic Marines moving out. He needs to grab, so he's got four bases up, but he needs to grab a fifth. Maybe get some siege tanks out here. He's floating a lot of minerals. Some dropships being built. Oh man, a drop on the rear. Either at bottom left where he can take out the defiler mount or the main, actually double the defiler mount. In the midst of this, Striker's feeling that confident in the space of all this. The Filer plaguing Mech Marines as they're charging bottom left. But yeah, this could be the deciding factor here is a potential drop. And I assume as the Medic Marines and the everything else is heading bottom left, that this is going to be more targeted towards the main. The Filer trying... <laughs> it's always interesting to see like a fleet of science vessels fleeing away from a single Defiler. The Filer is going to get engaged by, well, maybe going to get engaged by the rest of this. <clears throat> the breathing room is going to work in Striker's favor, though, because this is going to allow more, more Ultralisks to take the field. The dropship's moving the... Overlord sees it, though. It's not full dropships. There's a lurker that's been waiting here for something like this for all this time. But there's a lot of Ultralisks to deal with, so unless... Well, let's see... If it's enough, Striker once again, supply blocked. Everything dropping in the main. Ultralis is moving in. Some drones getting taken out. The Spire might get taken out, but it looks like, yeah, the Ultralis just responding too rapidly. And the upgrades are sizable. With isn't it plus three, and that means, yeah, these Marines and Medics just get chewed apart. Another attempted attack with some science vessels to irradiate to the left, but Striker holds. He's still got a sizable amount of Ultralisks. More coming, I assume. Zergling's running all over the map. That 12 o'clock base has some bunkers to try to defend, but honestly, it's one, one Dark Swarm from collapsing. Ultralisks charging forward to engage, and now, yeah, the unit's just starting to stream across the map. Striker with the supply lead. When Zerg has supply lead like this late game, it is scary. Yeah, just diving forward. More plagues, more dark swarm. All the way. Zerglings coming cross map from the bottom left. So Striker pulling the trigger here. Going to be able to engage. Zerglings alone should force a lift off here. An irradiated Ultralis with dark swarm and plague at the natural expansion usually indicates that it is not that far away from the GG moment for Striker. He does have a bunker here to try to defend, but Zerglings and Ultralis piling in. There's GG. Striker wins. Whip will move on to the loser's bracket. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.